kept saying no, 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 and uh, finally we started shooting a little bit of stuff. Some of the first stuff we shot was the K-Rock interview, and it was just, uh, it was gold. Every time we, we took the cameras out and filmed stuff, it was pretty clear we had to keep going. And as we went along, we kind of came across this fan movement to get him the star, and that became kind of our runner. So it was... Uh, yeah, you know, James, the great part about the star, and for you, Ralph, especially, is that you guys and the fans did that. I never cared about it. I know. <laughs> and, uh, Which made us very angry, by the way. That was well, painful. I know. We were like, we're doing this for you. We love you. We want to give you a star. And you're like, well, no, no, they, were, they wanted money. <laughs> The number of times I interviewed Adam to try to get him to sort of say the right thing about the star and show his how much he wanted it, and then I finally realized that's not what it's about. Yeah. It's not about getting him to say that he wants the star because he really didn't care. Yeah. It was, it was about the fans things. and you know the family and the people who care about him. And uh, but I think you care about it now. Well, James, I have stars on sidewalks all over the world. You know about Fontana, I yeah, think. Fontana. <laughs> you, though, are not a guy who's particularly comfortable with self-promotion or self-aggrandizement. You, you're not a guy who likes to put himself out there publicly. You love the work, you love being an, a performer, you love doing what you do, but I think sometimes you're uncomfortable with that kind of attention. How did it feel when they, you knew they were making a documentary about you? I feel terrible just being up here tonight. He's <laughs> <laughs> very shy. <laughs> Well, it, it, for me, it is difficult. Um, you know, it's business. Uh, it's a business that is somewhat humbling. But I think, uh, what can I say? There are so many people who are very much out in front and braggadocio or whatever, but they don't last long. If you don't love your fans and you don't do whatever you can to make the fans happy, then you ain't going to be happy, and your career lasts about 10 minutes. I mentioned a little bit earlier. Yeah, absolutely. That deserves applause. I mentioned earlier about the, uh, the glut of new classic Batman merchandise on the shelves and about the DVD and Blu-ray coming on later this year. It's been a long time coming for that, that show to be celebrated in this way. Is that gratifying for you as well? Yeah, it's amazing because, uh, you know, I've said for you, First of all, I've said for years <clears throat> that they do The Dark Knight, and that's wonderful. They have great, uh, you know, great talent, they have a lot of money, they have production stuff, you know, anything they need, and they do some brilliant films. But we did a different kind of thing. We did something that was, uh, you know, really serious for the children, and yet the adults would find it absurd and amusing, and, uh, you know what? I'm not the dark knight. I'm the bright knight. <laughs> now, James, you're given the task of making a documentary about your father-in-law, which could go either way. You know, if it goes well, all's well in the family. If it goes poorly, well, maybe Thanksgiving dinner is a little difficult this oh, year. That's disgusting. Is there anything... This is the first time we've spoken since we've finished <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping I'll be invited back for Christmas this year. As well as you know him, was there anything that was surprising to you while you were making the film that you didn't know about Adam, that you discovered? I said no hardball question, Ralph. Well, I just, I just thought, I mean, we learned so much about him through the course of the film that maybe there was something that surprised you while you were putting it together that you hadn't known. The one thing, there were, there were sort of these moments that would happen that would always surprise me. Um, you know, at the end of a Comic-Con, a long day of signing autographs and shaking hands, we would go to dinner and sort of be talking about the day and Adam would be tired and somebody would come up and introduce themselves and Adam would just turn it on and want to give them that experience. And that blew me away. And I, try, I kept trying to find those moments in the film, I think. Um, when the father and son come up to him in the elevator area. Right. It's sort of one of those moments. And that just always surprised me and always sort of... Uh, it was touching to me that he wanted to do that for every fan. Were you surprised by the amount of love and, and 
uh, admiration, the outpouring constantly is from the fans for him. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's not. It's nonstop, and it really crosses generations. And that that's an amazing thing when you see grandfathers and fathers and sons, and they all are fans for different reasons for different shows. It's pretty. It's pretty impressive. I think we have our microphone set up over here on either side in the aisle here. If you folks have any questions, you want to make your way to the microphones, that'd be great. Yes, sir. You have a question? I was too young to uh, be a Batman fan, but tonight I became a fan of how you're a father. Um, very impressive. Your humility, your humor. <laughs> what is your single greatest moment as far as, you know, we saw your career, but as being a family man, I didn't even know you were divorced. It's pretty, I've been divorced. It's tough. So what's your single greatest moment as being a family and father? You've got a lot of great moments as a father. It's hard to pick one, I guess, huh? Yeah. You know what? I think it may be uh, tonight because James' wife, who is my favorite kid, <laughs> is having a baby. Yeah. Any minute. Not actually tonight. I would not be ready Maybe but tonight. Maybe. We got to go to the party soon. Yeah. yeah. Get that chopper warmed up. <laughs> Despite Nina's horrible choice in men, you still find her to be your favorite? I'm just stunned. Uh, well, yes. The, the, the worst choice possible. I know. What are you going to do? I live with it. Let's uh, take one on this side. Hi there. What's your question? I am. Uh, January 1979, Legends of the Superheroes. Two episodes that you and Bert did. Yeah. Loved them. Can you talk about the experience that was like, 13, 14 years after doing Batman, and, and, and how did you feel about it, and, and just tell me what you thought about it. Yeah, I thought it was awful. <laughs> I really did. I just hated that show. And, um, <laughs> I did it for the moment. <laughs> For those who don't know, is uh, NBC did a two-night special with Hanna Barbera, I believe, with the producers, and they put together all the DC superheroes on stage, including Adam and Bert as uh, reprising their roles as Batman and Robin. And it was just, it was just a silly, goofy thing. And that's the one thing the real, the original Batman show never was. You guys always played it straight, and that the humor came out of how earnest you were. But that uh, that that show was just silly. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Any question over this side?